The Walker sisters' incredible story of strength, hard work, and love for the Great Smoky Mountains. Hello everyone. Welcome to Live It Up Adventures. I know it's been a while since I've done my last video, but had a lot going on, been working a lot, getting ready for Christmas, but I'm going to continue to put out videos. I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath because I'm climbing uphill. That's right. I'm on a little hiking trip today. We're going to hike one mile to the Walker Sisters cabin. The Walker Sisters, there were seven sisters in total. They had four brothers. Now, the trail to the Walker cabin is a very easy, moderate trail. It's wide, it's gravel, it's made for utility vehicles to go up and down on so they can maintain the trails and other stuff. As you can see, they've had to trim some trees. So it's made for vehicles to go up on, but it does climb in elevation. Looks like we're coming up on our first little footbridge. I think it's cool how you can, can drive across it. We're going to take this footbridge here. Alright, let's see what else is to come. Y'all just think about how far back here in the woods we are. How quiet peaceful it is and it's 2017 think about how peaceful it was to live out here and we're going to someone's home how peaceful it would have been in the 1860s and 70s all the way up to 1940s no the last sister died in 1966 Think about how peaceful it was all the way back, back then. All right, <clears throat> we've got a trail crossing coming up. Walker Sisters Cabin, point one miles to the right. Little Greenbrier Gap Trail, straight ahead. We're going into Walker Sisters Cabin. The trailhead is actually at the Little Greenbrier School. There's parking up there. You can drive up to the school and park and get on this trailhead. Or you can walk. I want to say it's like almost a mile, right at a mile. Something like that. You can walk a trail from Metcalf Bottoms to Little Greenbrier School. And then walk the extra mile here. Little Greenbrier Trail and School. I have a video on it. You can check it out. The link will be down below. There it is. The Walker Sisters Cabin. Their father, John Walker, a Union soldier and POW to the Confederacy, married Margaret Jane King after returning home from the war in 1866 and then obtained a home and land in Little Greenbrier Cove from Margaret's parents and then later on bought out her brother and sister to expand his land. Other buildings include a barn, a corn crib, pig pen, smokehouse, an apple barn, and a blacksmith stable. Also nearby was a flowing creek, and they built this structure on it to keep their butter and milk cool all through the summer. This is the inside. As you can see, there's the creek running through. And that water is about 70 degrees or so, even during the summer. So it would keep that water, or keep that building real cool during the summer. So that's where they would store their butter and their milk. Now John and Margaret Walker raised 11 children, 7 girls, and 4 boys in this home. 
Here pictured are the seven girls. From oldest to youngest, Margaret, Polly, Martha, Nancy, Louisa, Sarah, Caroline, and Heidi. In 1881, John and his son, James Thomas, built a small log cabin in the heart of Little Greenbrier community, and that was later known as the Little Greenbrier Schoolhouse. It also doubled as a primitive Baptist church all the way up until 1925. Now check that out. I have a video. It's that Little Greenbrier Metcalf Bottoms video, and you can see the schoolhouse <coughs> and see the cemetery outside from when it was a church. Here we are on the Walker front porch. I'm going to read my notes to give you a little bit more history. <clears throat> the boys all left home and married as they got older. And one of the seven sisters, Caroline, Sarah Caroline, she got married and moved off. The other six stayed here in Little Greenbrier with their father and inherited the land after he died in 1921 at 80 years old. Now, one of the sisters... Nancy, she died 10 years after her father did. The remaining five lived their lives out on the farm for over 40 years. And one of the sisters said, Our land produces everything we need except for sugar, soda, coffee, and salt. So they pretty much had everything they could possibly need to live. They had livestock. They had crops. They had plenty of land to hunt. They had over 120 acres of land to hunt and fish off of. There's street, streams and creeks all around this place. So they had plenty to survive off of. The only thing they didn't have was sugar, soda, coffee, and salt. All right, let's take a second. And we'll walk through the cabin. I don't know how much we could go through, but we'll walk through as much of the cabin as we can to show you all around. Here we are, we're going through one of the doors. Here we have a fireplace. And this just looks like it's one room. Got some old shelving here. And that's it. That's it for this room. Let's walk back out on the front porch. Ceilings are real low. The walkers must have been short. Let's walk into this room. Oh, wow. We have a huge fireplace here. Huge fireplace. And we have stairs that go upstairs. This is probably their loft. I'm not going up, I'm just sticking the camera over. This is the loft, probably where they all slept. And there's a back door here. So I'm gonna say this was a main living quarters, if I had to guess. Main living quarters have a nice breezeway from door to door to keep it cool during the summer. They could close it off, light the fireplace, keep it warm down here, probably heat up upstairs some as well. And I would guess this other room is probably more of their kitchen area. Had a fireplace, a lot more shelving, probably did a lot of cooking in here. I'm going to read from my notes here again. So in 1926, Congress approved the authorization of the park, allowing North Carolina and Tennessee to start raising money to buy half a million acres. Most of it was privately owned, and refusing to leave their 122-acre homestead, the Walker sisters held out until 1940. So they held out a pretty good bit of time. In 1940 is when President Roosevelt officially dedicated the Great Smoky Mountains National Park from a stone memorial that's up at Newfound Gap. Now, with the creation of the park, the sisters received $4,750 for their land, as well as the opportunity to live out the rest of their lives here at their home through a lifetime lease. But you know, living in the National Park meant they couldn't hunt, 
They couldn't fish. They couldn't raise their livestock. They couldn't grow crops. They couldn't cut timber. They couldn't do anything that they were doing ahead of time to survive and live here. But they made do. <clears throat> Visitors flocked to the park and visited what became known as Five Sisters Cove. The sisters sold homemade toys, dollies, apple pies, and even some poems that they had wrote. Now, Howdy died in 1947, and Martha died in 1951. Margaret died in 1962 at the age of 92 years old. And Louisa, or I think that's how you pronounce it, stayed in the house until her death on July 13th, 1964. Now, the sister Caroline, who moved away, she died two years later in 1966. All right, everyone. I hope y'all enjoyed the Walker Sister Cabin. I enjoyed the heck out of it. I enjoyed learning and doing my history on it. I love taking the little mile hike out here, walking through the cabin, sitting on the front porch. It was great. But now, I'm going to pack up. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to walk the one mile back to the car. And until next time, y'all remember to live it up.